Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today, we'll be taking a look at the ultra-budget, ultra-performance Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120 heatsink with the LGA 1700 mounting kit paired with an i5-12600K. I'll be going through the specs and the installation process, as well as temperature testing, both stock and overclocked. We'll be taking a look at the build quality and then my overall impression of this insanely cheap but also huge dual tower cooler. The Peerless Assassin 120 cooler is a rather large dual tower cooler that features six six millimeter heat pipe. In terms of the size of this cooler, you're looking at a cooler that is 125 millimeters long, 135 millimeters wide, and 157 millimeters tall, weighing in at a combined 1,020 grams, or about 2.25 freedom pounds. Thermalrite lists that there are a total of 53 fin layers that are about 0.4 millimeters wide, spaced about 1.8 millimeters apart. The base is expectedly a copper base with nickel plating. As for the fans, they can push a maximum of 66 CFM at a static pressure rating of about 1.3 millimeters to H2O at their maximum rotational speed. The fans do top out right around 1,550 RPM, plus or minus the standard 10%. In terms of the noise, you're looking at about 25 to 26 dBA, which is relatively quiet. Moving on to the installation, it really wasn't too bad. After getting the backplate in place and the tower bar mounted, the system was pretty easy to set up. All I had to do was secure the heatsink and then install the fans. I should mention though that generally while handling the heatsink, I did get a few little nicks or surface cuts on my hands during the install. Wasn't anything serious, but because this is such a budget cooler, the fins were a little bit sharper than I generally would prefer. As you can see here, I didn't have any issues with installing my memory modules, which is always good. Everything fit relatively well. Since the main draw to this heatsink is the claim of high performance, good aesthetics, ultra low price, let's take a look at the cooling capability on the i5-12600K. As far as the test system goes, I'll be testing this cooler in the Fantex G360A RGB gaming PC case, which I recently determined to be a pretty good value for a mid-range gaming PC. The system memory installed is a 32 gig kit of G-Skill 3200, and the GPU installed is the EVGA RTX 3060 XC. The ambient temperature during testing was about 71 Fahrenheit, or about 21 to 22 degrees Celsius. The first stress test I like to run is ASUS RealBench. I always run ASUS RealBench for the maximum eight hour stress test with the maximum amount of memory installed in the system. This test will simultaneously test the GPU and the CPU, putting out a pretty decent amount of heat in the case to simulate a real use case, something like video editing or a pretty demanding gaming load. For the first test, I ran the 12600K at the motherboard defaults and noted that the P-Core temperature at the end of the test averaged about 50.6C across each core. In terms of the E-Cores, they averaged out to be about 47C. For the second overclocking test, I overclocked both the CPU and the GPU. The 12600K's P-Cores were overclocked to 5GHz and the E-Cores were overclocked to 4GHz. With a static voltage of 1.3 volts, while the RTX 3060 XC was maxed out to about 190 watts through MSI Afterburner. After the test finished, the average P core on the 12600K was right around 68.5C, with an average E core temperature of 58.2C. This was relatively good performance in RealBench, both stock and overclocked, in my opinion. Moving on to A 64, I ran the CPU stress test for one hour to get an average stock P core temperature of about 47.8C and an average E core temperature of about 42.5C. With the CPU overclock applied, the P core average temperature increased to 59.3C and the E core average increased to 54.2C. Lastly, I always run the coolers through two rounds of Prime 95 testing. This test is more of a for science test rather than a real world scenario. You'll never see this type of workload outside of actually running Prime 95 on your computer. In the stock configuration, the 12600K's P cores averaged 55.8C and the E cores averaged 50C after about an hour of testing. These temperatures actually seem pretty great since we're running at stock speeds and stock voltage. Moving on to the overclock, we can see the temps shoot up quite a bit. 
This is expected, but it's actually a fairly good result in my opinion. With the overclock applied, the P cores averaged about 91.6C and the E cores averaged 74.7C. For the price, this cooler is really an insane value. Sure, the fins were a little bit sharp, but for the cost, would I install this again? Yes. I definitely would, especially if I knew I needed performance and I was on a strict budget. In my opinion, this cooler is probably going to look good in a lot of gaming PC cases as well. The cooler performed well, so I could confidently recommend it for any i5 or Ryzen 5 type gaming build, even if you had an overclock applied. I also suspect that this would do well with an i7 or a Ryzen 7 CPU. Thanks for watching. If you like this one, get subscribed to the channel, then ring the bell for notifications when new videos are posted. Don't forget to like the video, head down to the comment section to drop me a comment about which cooler or CPU and cooler combo you want me to test next.